Hey everyone, we are picking it up in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 4 today, which says, Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Another proverb about money here. This time is, what, what kind of profit do you really get from wealth? You can see the play on words there. It doesn't really profit in the day of wrath. Now, Solomon was a rich man. Solomon was the wealthiest king Israel ever had. People paid him tribute from all around the world. He had a zoo. He had golden uh, temple. He had golden palace. He had everything, you know. So he knew a thing or two about having money. And here he reminds us that when we stand before God in the day of wrath, your material wealth is really going to be of no consequence. God is not impressed or interested in how much money you have. Now, as we've said before, and I'll say every time, wealth itself is not evil. It's not wicked. But we've seen before the pursuit of wealth can lead to all kinds of sin, the greed that can come into your heart, the cheating you're willing to do, the lying you're willing to do, the deceiving, the hurting of someone else you're willing to do to get more money. It's a, it's a snare and it's a trap and it can lead to self-indulgence once you get it because now you have an opportunity to sin. So it's worth taking the time to examine what am I really going to get out of this? If I'm willing to go on that journey or if I'm just going to live my life and maybe accumulate more and more, I need to start wondering, what is this really worth? What am I really profiting here? It might be helpful in the short run, but when you get to heaven, God's not really going to care one way or another how much money you have. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 6 verses 19 through 20, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. So Jesus tells us here, like Solomon, to have an eternal perspective when it comes to your money. Jesus says, don't, don't make all your treasures be here. Make sure you're laying up treasures in heaven where you're going to be forever. And this is not some sort of backwards form of greed. Jesus is saying to, to live for what God is going to give you. Live for eternal rewards. Live for things that are immaterial, not just for what you're seeing here and now. Because as Solomon says, righteousness delivers from death. But riches aren't really that helpful on Judgment Day. Those who are righteous, and I will say, the rich righteous and the poor righteous. So there's not morality based on what your bank account says. But he says, your money's not going to help you. Your lack of money is not going to hurt you on that day. But righteousness will. If you have righteousness and no money, then you're golden in heaven. And if you're rich and righteous, then you're golden in heaven. But you're not going to have some sort of advantage over the person who was poor. Which is a reminder for us to not trade away the things that are good in life for the pursuit of something that's not going to benefit us once life is over. So many people have traded away their joy in the pursuit of money. They want to gain, 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 so they trade away all of their pleasure and enjoyment of life in order to have stuff. Or they trade away their youth. They, they spend their whole, you could say, best years, whether that's fair or not, but you know what I'm saying, the best years of their life grinding so that when they're old, they've got some money. They trade away their families. They trade away their kids, their relationships in order to have stuff. And then you come to the end and you're rich, but you've got nothing else. Solomon would say later in his life, in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 20, he who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. He's saying that's a vain way to live, to just be pursuing money. He says, because if you're a lover of money and it's all about getting money, it's sort of, I believe it was Nelson Rockefeller, or not Nelson, but John Rockefeller who was asked, how much money do you need? And he said, just a little bit more. And isn't that the truth? We just need a little bit more money. You're never satisfied with it. Even in this life, riches are a trap and a snare. So you've got to be pursuing heavenly riches first, things that are going to benefit you both now and forever. So that when you stand before God, you, you have a life that was lived for his glory and for his pleasure in the faith in Jesus Christ. So that you, you have access even to the next life. But you stand before God and you've got a bunch of gold. Well, the streets are paved with gold in heaven. What are you going to bring pavement for? You know, you've heard that old joke, I'm sure. It's about being content with what you have. Solomon would say that later in Ecclesiastes. He's like, look, you're going to work hard. You're going to live your life. And the money's either going to come or it's not. So be happy with what you've got. And lay up heavenly riches. There are some people that Jesus would tell, like the rich young ruler, you've got to sell everything you've got. You've got to get rid of this because it's too much of a snare for you. And then there were others like Barnabas and, and the others that we meet later in the New Testament who were rich and didn't sell everything that they had. 
but they had heavenly treasures. So it didn't matter whether they did or didn't on earth. So don't pursue something that's not gonna do you a lick of good on judgment day, especially to the exclusion of something that will matter, which of course is righteousness. God bless you guys.